hotel in Mendoza, Venezuela. Anyway, I, uh, <clears throat> I blew up two GoPros on the mount. One was, uh, first one I rolled over on, had it in my front pocket when I was sleeping. Second one I got wet. And so I had, uh, <clears throat> after we came down and I recorded the last of my, uh, my videos, I, uh, I did, since then, with the two cameras broke, I uh, did a nine hour hike off of the mountain, which is brutal. You're like all, you're, you're done, you came off, you know, it was a, so the last three days were the 14 hour climb up and back from camp three to try for the summit, which I came up a little bit short. And then the, the next day was a five hour climb down from camp three to camp one. And then, uh, and then when you leave, it's a nine hour hike out of there the third day in a row. And you're like done, and you can't believe you have to hike nine hours for, for uh, you know, you're not trying to go to the summit, you're just trying to get off the dang mountain and you have to hike nine hours to get to where the road is. So anyway, that was my last three days. Uh, pretty grueling. I'm feeling better though, coming around. Um, yeah, I feel, I'm feeling a lot better today. I, I mean, yes, yesterday was when I got back, yesterday like at 1 a.m. or whatever it was at night. And then um, got some good rest in today. And uh, feeling better, definitely feeling better. I talked a little bit to, when I was doing that nine hour hike out, I talked to Vladimir, our, our lead guide, and he basically said what they have, they have a, they have a, they have a tight turnaround when they're taking seven climbers up and two guides, their turnaround is, uh, you know, their turnaround is three o'clock in the afternoon. They have to turn around because they want that many clients and to that many guides, that ratio, they want you off of the mountain before it gets dark. And so it's a pretty strict turnaround. And basically what he told me is if, I, if, if, if it was a one-on-one -on -one with him or with another guide and me, I would have made it because they would have pro they would have just took me up a little bit slower, you know, took me up the mountain a little bit slower so I could have acclimate a little more, a little more drinking water, a little more uh, rest, say let's we go up two hours slower. And they said I would have made it, you know. So, but because of that drop dead turnaround time, um, I couldn't even rest, you know. So every time I'd say I just need some rest and I can go on, you know, they had to keep pushing me because, uh, because they have that drop dead turnaround because of the ratio of clients to uh, to guides. So anyway, kind of one of those things. Long, lot, long time up there. It's good. I mean, I was on was on the mountain like 17 days. It's a pretty awesome experience and accomplishment for me. Uh, but just kind of a bummer. It comes down to right that end, that last, that last climb, you know, that last day, and you either make it or you don't. And Four of our, our team made it and three didn't. So, but it, it wasn't, it's an awesome experience and I love this mountain. I'll definitely be back to try it again. And I think like I was kind of analyzing it and I, I've been told that the last part was really steep. You know, the last little bit was really steep. And I thought that meant like, like the last hour or something. So this is another thing that I just don't, um, you know, it was like I was, so the whole time I'm going, and I'm going up this steep part. I mean, it's like we went like four hours up this steep part near the top, you know. And uh, and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, there's still a really steep part at the end, right? Well, and I'm so I'm like, I'm, you know, I don't know how much the mind 
how much my mind affected me on this, but I know in the back of my mind I was thinking there's still a really steep part to go, and I'm on this steep part. And it turns out what I was on was the part he was talking about. It's a four or five hour straight up climb at the end, you know. Uh, it's not an hour, so it wasn't going to get steeper than that. It was just going to be four or five hours at that steepness, you know, which I don't know, 35 degrees maybe, something like that. Um, but no switchbacks. It's just like, Woo! and I might have psyched myself out a little bit too. You know, there's no doubt about it. I might have psyched myself out thinking that it was going to be steeper further up because all of that is just a blur. That whole time, you know, and how he describes it when the altitude starts getting to you, it's like somebody getting drunk. And I remember he pulled me over and he said, he says, how you doing? I said, awesome, because I always said that, awesome. <laughs> And he goes, well, you're starting to stagger. <laughs> he goes, that's not good. You better focus and, and stay focused on, you know, walking straight, you know. And so, uh, you know, and I did my best to try to do that. And then, like I said, then it was like I was just, um, next thing I know, I'm on the ground. And I don't even remember. I think we took a group break. And then when they told us to go, I just couldn't get up anymore. My, my buddy did, you know. And he was able to, to finish, you know, because we only had an hour to two hours to go, depending what speed you were able to go. Um, but I just could, I couldn't even crawl. I was so weak, I couldn't even crawl. And uh, that altitude just smoked me. But on the positive side, my old record was like 17,200 feet, one of the volcanoes in Mexico. And this time I went... 21,600 feet, you know, I was only 600 feet short of the, because the, the whole mountain is 22,200 feet, so I was only like 600 feet short, it just, it's just, it's kind of a bummer, but, you know, it's part of life, you know, I was really, really, really close, um, and like I said, if I'd just taken two more hours, maybe, maybe at, when, it, when I, when I was starting to fall apart, or earlier would have been probably better, like what he's saying, you know where you could where you uh, just kind of went up a little bit slower, drank a little bit more water, ate a little bit more food, took a few more breaks, and then I would have been strong at the top, you know, rather than being on this push because they have to get everybody off in the dark. And I don't blame them for that. Could you imagine like you got seven climbers who make it to the top and they're all a mess, and and then it's dark and you gotta get them, you gotta herd them like herding cats. You gotta herd them off the mountain, you know, and not have them fall or do anything crazy and you know hurt themselves or kill themselves so um anyway it was good i liked that talk with him uh i now i understand why they're pushing me so hard uh when i started to get tired and uh because they got that's their company policies you got to get them off the mountain before it turns dark so anyway good stuff but i'm starting to feel better i uh you know my coach asked me uh she said asked me how my frostbite went you know what I told her? I said, I said, you know what? I bought these 14-hour hand warmers, hand and body warmers, 14-hour, I believe, or 18-hour, I can't remember. But anyway, really long ones. And then I, uh, and as soon as it started getting cold, man, I was, I had those on, man. I had those in my hand. I had them squeezed up against my pole. And uh, I just didn't give my hands a chance to get cold, you know. I mean, they, didn't, they looked funny at, at when, as soon as I got done, like they were, like they've been burnt because I stuck because I burnt held those I had the death grip on those hand warmers because I just was not gonna let my hands refreeze, not with you know some frostbite already on them because of the I don't know everything I've heard it doesn't sound good if you keep frostbite in your hands, and so I had the death grip on there and so that's what I told my coach. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the positives. Number one, awesome team, man. I just. I love my teammates, you know, all the the six other climbers, um, no complaining, just total pros. I mean, if, if, if your definition of a pro is, which probably one of my definitions is that you don't complain. They just freaking did the work, you know, just put their head down and did the work. I'm so proud of every one of them, uh, how hard everybody worked, nobody complained, everybody would just jump in and camp and do whatever their share was, and uh, I loved it all. Um, <clears throat> the guides were incredible. You know, they uh, 
just very, very professional. Um, felt like I was in safe hands. Uh, loved it all. I mean, I loved uh, the guy just, they were mellow, man. Mellow, mellow. So if I did, you know, stupid things, anything like <laughs> little stupid things, they just let it go. You know, it wasn't some huge deal if I did some little brain dead thing. Like one day I forgot my lunch. <laughs> I said, <clears throat> I told him, I said, don't worry, I practiced uh, fasting when I was training, so I won't eat. But everybody kind of kicked in a little bit of food and got it to me. I do that stuff sometimes. I forget like little stupid things like that, and and they didn't, and I just appreciated they didn't make a huge deal out of it, you know. So um, I got 17 more days experience on the mountain, man. I'm better. I've improved a lot, like with my cramp on work on the steeper stuff. Um, more comfortable. Uh, the scree, the scree killed me when I was in Mexico on the volcanoes, you know, going down that. I learned, I'm like, you know, I'm not the greatest at it yet, but I'm a lot more comfortable in all that ground. You're coming, especially downhill, and the stuff's all moving, you know. It's like, whoosh. It's like this little landslide that you're riding down the hill. So I thought that was great. I'm just more experienced at that. I was more comfortable. I know some of this is not as steep as Denali. It's in the 30 to 35 range, you know, I think when it starts hitting 40 is where you have to start, um, uh, 40 degrees is where you have to start roping up. So we didn't have to rope up because we're in that 30 to 35 range, but I was more comfortable, you know, I was just comfortable with it. I'm not, I'm getting used to the steeper slopes. Um, you know, when we got to the snow, I was, I, I felt comfortable on that. When we were on the scree down lower, I was comfortable on that. So just all in all, I was more comfortable and then, um, and like I said, I think one of the biggest things was that I was only 600 feet from the top. I mean, I was so close, so close. I wanted to crawl to it if I could have. I just, I couldn't even crawl. I tried. <laughs> I'm so weak. Um, but, you know, like just knowing that if I'd had a little more rest and gone a little bit slower, that uh, our lead guy believed I would have made it, you know, and I believe that too. So the next time I will be trying to <clears throat> trying to get uh, probably a guide who I can go by myself with, even if I start out with a team, bring an extra guide along that, you know, maybe I have to pay extra money, but if I have to finish in the dark, then fine, I don't care, I just want to make it, you know. Um, highest point I've ever been by over 4,000 feet. My sister said that, so don't underestimate that, Bill, that you didn't make it. <clears throat> you made it to, I made it to, um, 20, what did I make it to? 31,600 feet, 31,000. How let's try 21,600. 31,000 be the record higher than Everest. Woo! No, 21,600 feet. The peak was 22,200 feet. I believe it's the second highest of the seven summits behind Everest. So it's it's up there. And I was really, really, really close. And it was four over 4,000 feet higher than I've ever gone. So that's all really big positives. And I thank my sister Les for uh, pointing that out to me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You didn't make it. You didn't make it to the summit, but you made it the highest you did by 4,000 feet. So and, uh, and I also, speaking of that, I want to thank WBE for sponsoring this. Huge, huge opportunity for me. I appreciate it, um, you know, sponsoring this so I get up on that mountain and, uh, and give it my best shot, which I did. There was some, I saw some lady at breakfast. She says, I saw you up there. You were in really bad shape. She says, but great effort. I go, well, thank you for that because all that where I started falling apart, I can't even remember it, man. I just can't even remember it. You know, like if you have a really bad drunk, <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of years, but I remember your memory gets kind of like lost. And I guess that's what it is when you get up in that higher altitude, it's kind of like being drunk. And so I don't even remember it, but she said, you really gave a great effort. I said, thank you for that. <laughs> anyway, and uh, so this I will, Next time you see me, I'm gonna clean up, I'm gonna have this whole thing shaved. I just had to go buy a new shaver and uh, really sharp blades, I hope, because this is a probably 19 day beard now or something like that. So 
it's time to clean up. And I, I used to clean up pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to book. There's, there's some good skin under there. I mean, I did get my lips kind of wiped out a little bit, you know, but um, all in all, it was a really, really positive experience. And I'm really happy about it. And, you know, these, uh, these other climbers where we just have a big bond, you know, after this, because I think everybody was such, such great people from so many different countries. You know, what was there, seven climbers from six different countries? Um, and when you put two Australians together, that's always freaking fun. <laughs> anyway, we had a great, I had a great time, so. <clears throat> Ojo le tigre! Woohoo! Hola! All right, I'm feeling pretty good today. It's time to make my break. It's time to get out of Venezuela. Heading for uh, back home. Long, long day. It'll be a long day, but I'm already working on my next, uh, I got Denali on my mind for June, so I'm working on that right now. I'm already, once I get a little coherent, it's like, let's start on the next one. I think I gained a lot of experience on this mountain, Aguancagua, that's gonna help me with my, uh, my Denali climb. So anyway, yeah, I'm getting ready to head out. I wanna again give a shout out to WBE. Uh, thanks, Les and Mike, and uh, and all my friends at WBE. This is awesome that they they uh, sponsored this climb, and uh, it was it was freaking awesome. I missed it by a little bit, you know, the top, but really, really close, and gained tons tons of experience, and uh, had an awesome time. So anyway, but now I'm planning the next one. <laughs> I am planning the next one, so uh, that's how life is. You go from one thing to the next. There's no, at least my life, there's no messing around in the middle, uh, you know, with big long dead spells. So I like to, I like to keep it moving. So if I'm in the middle, I already got my next event coming, and I'm training for it. And that's, I'm planning my training right now for Denali. So, ooh, oh de tigre, woohoo! Thank you.